Are we live? That's the real question. Allegedly, we're live. Allegedly. There's always like a weird feedback. Judith says hi. <laughs> Judith, are, are we live? Someone tell us if we're live. <laughs> I, we, it says we have five people watching. Oh, wow. Yeah, five whole people. Does that include us? <laughs> no. Are I, we watching ourselves? I, I mean, I can't. I go to, well, you can do it. You actually are subscribed to me. I'm not like subscribed to myself. <laughs> so. That seems like pumping the numbers. Yeah, no, it's not ideal. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Judith. I, I assume people can see this. Okay, she says we're live. I trust Judith. Judith just got a new dog named Luna. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she's very cute. I wish Judith could share a picture in the comments because it's the best dog. It's so cute. So this is just a very casual, like, live to celebrate 3K and, like... We, said, we decided to do a face reveal for 3K. <laughs> there you go. Well, I don't know. Thanks I for coming. I love my audience. They're like the sweetest people. And like some of them are really close friends. And I don't know, this seemed like a fun thing to do. So yeah, let's see. Uh, hi, Marlene. We've got... <laughs> Fair. Ryan does have a book review he has in the works, right? Yeah, yeah. So I want to record that sometime soon. He had a book he wanted to talk about. So that'll be happening. Amber, how is the reading going, Amber? I've kind of kept track on Twitter, but have you gotten one book down yet? Today is um, Dewey's Readathon, which is a 24 hour readathon. I never have it in me to do those, but I'm always jealous of people. Hello. She has very good reviews. Everyone who's not subscribed to her has made a mistake. Trust me, she's got great sci fi. Thanks, Beth. Hello. He is. Big on reviews in the Discord. So if you ever want well thought out written reviews, come to the Discord. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this wasn't planned. No, we don't talk about our outfits. Sometimes we accidentally pick like same color sweaters and then we glare at each other. No, and no we've one, never done that. That has definitely happened. And then I change because I don't want to be. I was going to say, couple. you might glare. I don't, I don't care. Kayla. Hi. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, Amber's on book two. Okay, cool. So like Amber always like tries to read multiple things in one day. And you know, like I'm happy if I read like a book in three days. I'm happy if I read like two pages. Yeah, right. So I mean, my current read is really good. And I do hope to like get some of it, most of it done this weekend. I'm reading The Ninth Rain. It's a very good book. So I'm having a great time with that, thankfully. Um, we just had our non-spooky spooky movie night last night. Yeah, which is in apparently have become something of a tradition now. Yeah, well, because all of us are wimps in my apartment and don't want to watch horror, but we want to like... We want something of the vibe of Halloween. <laughs> so we landed on what we do in the shadows. So good. It was a rewatch for both of us. Yeah. Yeah, we had like our roommate and a couple of friends. So like, I think of the three movies, at least one person had not seen one of them. And then we did Train to Busan. I loved that one. That was new to me. Train to Busan is perfect. Like I was telling Ryan, normally I only watch zombie movies like once. Mm -hmm. I would rewatch that movie. <laughs> that movie made me laugh. It made me fist pump. It made me stressed. It made me cry. It was so much. And we watched The Thing, which I loved. I know. Which you... I had never seen, actually. Yeah, The Thing's like, I think I like Alien more than The Thing in terms of that genre of like sci-fi kind of closed circle mystery thriller thing. Thanks, Travis. Stephanie! That, that was a car in Boston. We're like right on the street. Yeah. <laughs> so in, enjoy that ambiance. Quill and I, Quill's, um, is, is it your fiance or your boyfriend? I don't know. Quill's significant other and them dress all the time. And only realize after we've left the house. That's classic. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you're here too. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the plan. I don't plan on stopping booktube anytime soon. I read too many books and Ryan can only take me talking about them so often. <laughs> so. The thing is a thing now. Yeah, we didn't watch the new one, just to be clear. clear. We watched the original. Well, it wasn't the original? Yeah, the John Carpenter 82 okay. film. Yeah. We watched the 1982 one with, um, what's his name? Kurt Russell. Professor Russell. I should know his name. It's I... weird. I've seen like the other John Carpenter, Kurt Russell movies, but never watched The Thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I've seen Escape from New York and Big Trouble in Little China and just never watched, like, the one everyone actually knows. I was going to say, The Thing is totally in your wheelhouse, too, yeah. like, in terms of your type of movies. Oh, so many comments. How do people keep track? The thing, both versions are great. I haven't played the board game. If anyone's played the board game, let me know. There's a board game for it. It's kind of like, the, it's like a traitor oh, board game. Oh, that'd be game. good. Yeah, oh. I think you would like it, but I haven't played it myself. 
you know, they made a game called Among Us, which is, <laughs> I think, based on the thing. I don't know if that's true. Among Us is like Mafia slash uh, Werewolf. It's like that social deduction trader game, yeah. but they made I an app. I was making a joke. Oh, well, I'm, you know me, I'm colorful. You know, there's a generation of kids who like played Among Us and then their parents showed them the thing and they're like, wait, is this the Among Us movie? <laughs> I agree. Alien rules. I, I think I like Alien more than Aliens, I think. But I like them both. Yeah. It's great. Like, Alien and Aliens are so, like, it's, like, I love both those movies. And, like, one's a horror movie and one's an action movie. And it works. Like, yeah. it, it works. Yeah, and I like... I Alien think... 3 does not work. And Alien Resurrection does not work. Yeah, I haven't watched Alien 3 because you told me what happens at the beginning. And I'm like, that's the worst writing I've ever heard. <laughs> Like, I can't. Yeah, Alien 3 has a very, like, notoriously, like, difficult uh, production history. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Things moved. Hi, Andrew. Thanks for stopping by. Um, You have to read The Thing with Beard's short story. I don't... I guess you'll have to read the book. Yeah. Ryan loves reading books after he's seen the movie. That's what got him into reading. Yeah, I haven't done that in a long time, actually. Yeah. I mean, it could be really good. Thanks, Abby. Uh, let's see. Really? Oh, gosh, show up. <laughs> I really liked The Train to Busan. One of my friends was asking me if it was scary. And, like, so I'm horrible at jump scares. And I don't think it's scary, but it definitely has, like, that anxiety you expect. Yeah, it's 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 more adrenaline um, than anything. Like, if, you, if you've seen 28 Days Later, it reminded me a lot of that and how the zombies behaved. Um, I think which I don't seen... think 28 days is all that scary, but there's a, a, I think Train to Busan was less scary than that. No, Train to Busan was just like a lot of action and it had like a lot of moments where you hold your breath, but not because you were going to be scared. Yeah. Like you're not embracing for jump scares at any point. It's just like, yeah. It, yeah. But super no. well-written characters too. Oh, I loved it so much. I now understand why Twitter got upset. I, I understand now when Twitter was like, how are we making an adaptation? This is perfect. Because mm -hmm. It's very good. Um, yeah, no, you, everyone really should subscribe to her. She has really well thought out content. Highly recommend. <laughs> Booktube is actually, I started it because my mental health was really bad and I needed something that made me feel productive <laughs> and like let me talk about things that I loved. And it. I started three months before the pandemic and then like my pandemic would have been very different if I didn't have booktube to make me feel productive. Like Ryan knows, like I need to accomplish tasks Yeah. and we, I couldn't work for a couple months. So like that would have been bad. Uh, I said, I haven't seen escape from New York. I, I think there's a board game for the little China one. What's the one called? Big trouble in little China. Yeah. That I've actually heard is really good, but I haven't played. I don't know what Stephanie's laughing at, but she laughed at something we said at one point. <laughs> I, I, a few of my friends in college, sorry to jump in on this common thing, but uh, a few of my friends in college watched that movie and then they joked about like trying to make a remake of that movie starring Danny DeVito and calling it Little Trouble in Big China. <laughs> also, Amber, we did watch Predator recently, although we watched it on a night that I was really tired. So I, yeah, we watched it, we started it like really late. So I, like I don't know if you absorbed all of it. I absorbed enough, but it was funny because I said the same thing we watched The Thing last night because The Thing takes place in Antarctica and The Predator takes place in South America rainforest. And in both, I'm like, this is very inaccurate to the climate and temperament and things they'd be interacting with. I'm just like, they have just been killed by so many spiders that are crawling all over them. <laughs> I'm just like, But I mean, I appreciate it. But I think of those three movies, The Predator is my least favorite. I also fell asleep during the thing last night because that was the last movie we watched. Well, you've already we seen it. Yeah. So. Well, and I have had insomnia all week. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's been it's been a rough uh, it's been a rough sleeping last couple weeks. We did this a couple years ago. Um, we yeah. live near a movie theater that does midnight showings, and so we watched Alien at like nine p.m., eight p.m., and then mm -hmm. we went to the theater to watch Aliens. And it was really fun. Um. I agree. Almost everything I've watched, I think I've primarily watched Korean foreign films, has given me anxiety. And like, it's all different genres. And every time I'm like, this is so clever and so anxiety inducing and such a commentary. So booktube make. Well, OK, it depends on your definition of productivity, right? Like, am I doing what I should be doing for my thesis? Not always. But am I reading a book? Yes. <laughs> or I'm editing something. So I don't know. Of course. I, I love your channel. I think it's really great. Um, short story is actually called Things Thank with you. Beards. 
<laughs> okay, cool. Nice. That's good to know. Uh, thanks so much. Oh, here. Hi from the UK. Yeah, we chose this time. It's good for our time, but I also just know that like I have friends. I, I unfortunately I know trying just, to figure out all the time zones. Like I know Australia is kind of left in the dust, but because I think they're like actually like twelve hours sometimes different from us. So it's like some people might be up. It's midnight <laughs> on a Saturday, but they might be asleep, which like I would be. So yeah. So your favorite one last night of the movies you watched? Which one was it? Probably. That's tough, actually. Well, I'd already seen what we do in the shadows, and I, I really like that movie anyway. But I don't know, Train to Busan and the Thing were both great, but both great for different reasons. So yeah. it's tough. Thanks, Heather. Also, if you guys have any questions, I didn't want to make this like an official Q and A, but if you have questions, feel free to like ask, and we we might answer depending on the question and <laughs> things like that. But yeah, we're just here to chat with you guys about whatever. Ryan's actually not, I don't think stressed or anxious, but he's like, what do you do on a live stream? It's like, I don't know what, I don't know what the rules are. <laughs> the rules are, I guess, don't get YouTube to block the, the video. The last time I was on a live stream, I had a job. That's true. We, what, we, we were at Andy's for the live stream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were playing games, which Andy, when you're, you know, not starting a new bookstore and like running your cafe and movie theater, do that again, which if you don't know Andy Smith, um, has a great booktube channel, but also has all of those things. I forget what state you live in, Andy. I think it's Minnesota, but I could be very wrong. But congrats on that bookstore. That's like a dream. I was talking to my sibling this week about how we should start that cafe. And then they're like, yeah. have a cosplay section. I'm like, we could have a space for like book clubs and board games and D&D &D nights in the cafe too. Like, I really want this. I know I'll make zero money. There is, there is no money to be made in fun, wholesome things. <laughs> so... That is so true. We somehow are doing um, a video that I'm in a collaboration video that actually does have like all four time zones and it's somehow working. Granted, it has to be like 1 p.m. for me. But I don't know how we did it. Uh, being a worldwide hit comes with the time. <laughs> yeah. A worldwide hit. Uh, he's actually in South Africa, which is always nice. Gives me some really good um, indie recommendations. Uh, my favorite book series. Well, you, you might have read less, so maybe you can do it. <laughs> Well, I just I read 100 books a year. You've, you've read less than me. <sighs> I have to think about it. Let me look at my favorite bookshelf. I, <laughs> I don't read a lot of series. That's the thing. That's true. You maybe have you read Mistborn and you've read His Dark Materials. That's true. Um, All right. Favorite finished series, The Broken Earth Trilogy, or His Dark Materials, depending on my nostalgia level. Favorite ongoing, it has to be The Stormlight Archive. Like, I don't think that's a question. Um, yeah, I don't really get excited. I guess like it was. I'll I'll say Game of Thrones or Song of Ice and Fire just because <laughs> like for for all the lows that have been recently, like the highs were high. Yeah, you and it's love the that only book it's series. the only like series that I know like off the top of my head that I'm like, oh yeah, like that's pretty good. Like I mean, I guess Harry Potter as a kid, but like you know, time has has worn off some of that that shine well even before all the controversy i would always find myself re-watching the movies instead of rereading the books when i needed that like nostalgia hit yeah like i want to reread his dark materials like all the time which was my other childhood nostalgia series um <laughs> yes such a good line that movie is just perfect if you haven't seen what we do in the shadows you have to try it it's like it defies really classification it's just a good time <laughs> Like, I guess technically what's a vampire mockumentary, but it's so much more. Uh, eating dinner now here in the Netherlands. Yeah, I purposely wanted to try and make it around dinner time because maybe <laughs> some people just wanted to have some company. I know I love watching BookTube when I eat. That's primarily when I watch BookTube, when I have breakfast, lunch, and not always dinner because we'll, like, watch Modern Family or something. But Something low, low uh, attention span requirement. Yeah, I mean, that's why I post my videos for, like, sort of breakfast time, Eastern Standard Time, because, like, I know that's when I want to watch videos. It's not what the algorithm wants me to do. They're like, most of your viewers are on at noon. And I'm like, but everyone posts their videos at noon. Welcome! Thank you so much. Um, if werewolves travel to the future, do they become will wolves? Um, thank you for this grammar lesson. I don't, I don't say werewolves, though, I think. Because were and will, he's playing off grammar. Oh, you contradictorian. Yes. <laughs> he like hates all my favorite books. To yeah. answer your question. 
he had he luckily you warned me you're always like one star review of something i'm like i am not going to put myself through this video <laughs> um has having a booktube channel changed your reading that's hard to say because the pandemic definitely changed my reading um it hasn't changed ryan's reading <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I think more, I, I plan a little bit more before book two, I would read six to seven books a month, which is only a little bit less than my new normal, which is like eight to 11 sort of. Um, but I used to just, oh, Delilah, she hates being held. She will not be here for long. <laughs> um, oh, you, you've picked up the angry cat. <laughs> But I used to just like be like, I want to read this thing. Let's see when I can get it from the library and then just read it when it came in the library. I used to not put in like 20 million holds at the library. And then I used to finish series relatively close together, which I still kind of do. But like when I read Farseer, I read Farseer until I was done. And then I picked up my next book thing. And I now read more books at once. And I now listen to audiobooks. So there are slight changes, but it's not dramatic, I don't think. Thanks, Brandon. Hey, what up, Brandon? Oh, yeah, I think this is Ryan's friend. He is, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know who's who. And thanks, Josh. Evie, you're never late. Everyone else is merely early. <laughs> I've been dreaming about running a board game cafe for years. I mean, my one of my friends has a board game cafe here in um, Boston. And I know at times it's stressful, but like I love how much of a community setting he makes it. If you live in the Boston area, it's in Brookline. It's called Night Moves Cafe. And it's very like, you know, people. And like you, I, when I, before I met Ryan, I would just go every Monday and play with my friends. And like you meet new people and you form your own game groups. It was fantastic. I love how much effort he put into making that a community space. Not all cafes are like that, I don't think, but that one for sure. How was the Bruins game last night? Well, it was on the laptop while yeah. we watched the movies because Ryan and our roommate Mike cannot not consume Boston sports when they're happening. Yeah, so like <laughs> it's the NHL signed a deal with like ESPN. So it was on Hulu, like not Hulu Plus, like just a Hulu account could use it. And the streaming was actually really good. So that was cool. Hopefully they do it more often because we have Hulu. But yeah, no, it was, it was nice to see them win one. Yeah, we've only played three games. I know. <laughs> Still so early. Yeah, I can't wait till we actually like play more games. The scheduling's been weird this year. Congrats. If you're trying to get a newbie into sci-fi, what do you suggest? <laughs> it depends on the person. Um, if you are telling me someone who's into literary fiction, I would give them classic literary sci-fi or maybe the memory police and stuff like that. Like if they like thematically dense works, Philip K. Dick's cool, Asimov, stuff like that. If they are more... Like someone I know who loves action movies, I'd give them more of an action-paced sci-fi. Um, I think The Martian is one people always say. I mean, I think that's true. It's like a really quick read, and it also works because sometimes when you're trying to get someone into a genre, you're also trying to get them back into reading. And like giving someone like a quick read is like that serotonin, man. <laughs> that they're like, I can read all the things. Yeah. If they're a video gamer, Metro 2033 works well. Because even though it's kind of a dense read, like they know the video game usually, like our roommate has that and he's been slowly reading it. So I don't know. I keep thinking about making the video of beginner, like sci-fi books for beginners. And I have, I think it's a hard question. So I'm trying to think of how to answer it because people are individuals. I don't know. Like what was your first sci-fi? Do you remember? Because you have a lot of classic sci-fi. It might be Androids, do Android stream alert or cheap. Which is also a short one, but nothing like Blade Runner. Because that's what's tricky is like, if, if they love Jurassic Park, I'd give them Jurassic Park because that book is very good, a good um, comp with the movie. I mean, the movie came from the book, obviously, but you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's close. Jurassic Park's a good one. Yeah. So I don't know if that's helpful. I'm going to make that video one day, I promise. But also, shout out to Bethany at Beautifully Bookish Bethany. She has a podcast, and we did do a whole recommendations for beginners in different angles um, for a podcast episode, and Tori Morrow was there. So we talked for like an hour. <laughs> In that that's how hard this question is to answer. There's no like one answer. Um, I guess I wouldn't recommend Nine Fox Gambit unless they, this person loves banana stuff. But <laughs> we are seeing Dune in, in like six hours. Yeah, I'm very excited. I wanted to see it yesterday, but Ryan is a creature of habit and always works out on Friday. And I knew we couldn't make the 6 p.m. If I just knew it'd be stressful, and I try to not add stress <laughs> to our lives. So I, I waited a day. It's not like I'm going to be spoiled for the plot. Yeah, <laughs> like I've read the book and I know it's the first half of the book. I've known both of those things. And I know it'll be so That's another sci-fi recommendation, Dune. Dune I would give to someone who loves epic fantasy. 
Like, if, but if someone's not used to, like... Or if you just like Star Wars. Well, yeah, but well, Star Wars is epic fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> but people don't, you know, always associate the terms. Yeah. Uh, where do you see your channel going in the future? I mean, for now, I mean, obviously, I've only been doing this for a year and a half, kind of similar stuff, like making videos that I like to make. I love talking about what I'm currently reading. So those Friday videos or something like that will always exist. I love making recommendation videos. One of the reasons I made BookTube is all I do when I finish a book is like find the person in my life who will like it and be like, read this book. The number of times I finish a book, I'm like, Ryan, I think you'd like this book. And then he doesn't pick it up because he doesn't have time. <laughs> I'm finally reading Hyperion. That's true. It's true. He's finally reading Hyperion. Because for how much you like classic sci-fi, I think there are some things you'll really appreciate about it. Mm. And I think you'll really like the sequel. But um, so I, I think I'll always want to do recommendations. I love I don't I love being a part of the community and doing stuff. So I'd, I'd like to do more read alongs and like channel readathons and just keep keep fostering a fun corner of the Internet. <laughs> so who knows? I'd, I'd like to channel to keep growing because it's nice. I, I do like having the extra cash to help pay for the cats and stuff like that. <laughs> but you should get the other lump. The other lump is just sleeping. We all, he always wakes us up. You want, me, you want me to wake up the beast? Yes, wake right. up the beast. I'm all I see. Ariel, thanks. Ooh, do, 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 do. Uh, Michelle, it's time to earn your cat food. Yeah, right. Oh, the comments moved. This is what people always say when they're like, the comments moved. What is your favorite book club and why is it Space Science? <laughs> Honestly, my favorite book club is my local book club, but it's the one I've been in for like six years. So it's just at my local bookstore, Brookline Booksmith. And I, it's what got me into reading literary fiction, historical fiction, contemporaries. And it's really helped me. Like if I hadn't joined that book club, I wouldn't have been able to read Lord of the Rings. Like I needed to practice focus. Um, I feel like there are a lot of different types of readers. Some people can sit and read for hours. I don't have that attention span. <laughs> and part of why I could get into reading again is my commute gave me like uninterrupted 20 minutes of reading time. So that's part. Of, so my commute in that book club really helped me be more patient. What are you doing with this cat? He is not moving. Oh my God. He's so chonky. And they love sleeping in their cat carriers. I'm sure other cat owners understand, but here he is the fuzz. So yeah, I, so I, I like, I like where the channel's at. Um, book club. So yeah, my favorite book club is the one I see people in person <laughs> and we vote for books every month. It's it's just nice. Come on, Ryan. We all know it should be Malazan for fantasy, even if you haven't even read, oh, I read it. The answer is always Malazan. I, Ryan, I don't think would enjoy Malazan, <laughs> if I'm honest, although I'm enjoying it. If I, if I gave Ryan Malazan to read, he wouldn't read anything else for like four years. Like that's... <laughs> With your reading speed although you do like the author who does cloud atlas so i don't know yeah i just read the bone clocks and i loved it <laughs> i'm sorry guys i love the in-person book clubs uh hunt for the wilder pe wilder people have you watched that one no i've heard of it though i mean i'm willing to watch anything that man directs he's like you know you get directors you really trust um I, I briefly talked about this. It was not pandemic related. It was grad school <laughs> depression related. Um, and also just I had discovered BookTube in June of 2019-ish. Because I used to only watch like board game YouTube, <laughs> which is a very small part of YouTube, but it's what I would watch. And I found BookTube and I'm like, oh, this is so nice. And it makes me want to read. And I love it. It was just, it, it really worked for me. Like I'm a avid BookTube watcher. Like I still do that a lot. BookTube has changed a little bit how I watch because I know what helps in content creators, but I still avidly watch BookTube. And then I was like, I wanna put my thoughts out there, especially since um, I have, when I started watching BookTube, I'd already read most of the popular series, not all of them, but like a lot of them. And I was like, well, I wanna talk about the like new series I'm finding that other people might not know about. And like, I wanna recommend books and you know, all that. So it was a combination and turns out I really liked the whole process. Like that's the thing I wasn't sure about is would I like hearing myself talk when I edited? How much would I like editing? My least favorite part is still thumbnails. I hate thumbnails. <laughs> I think if my channel ever became like large enough funding wise that I could like pay someone to make thumbnails, I would do that. <laughs> I already pay to use a, a system to help me caption my videos better because I think captioning is important, but I don't like doing it by hand very much. <laughs> And YouTube is not sustainable. Try and sit him up. Are you going to? He's so sleepy because he spent all night yelling at us. Yes, you do. Yes, yes, you do. Everyone needs a board game cafe. 
we're all individuals. Well, yeah. <laughs> I could not get through Metro 2033. Yeah, I mean, it's really dense and it's very atmospheric and it's not my favorite thing. I read that 2015, 2016, 2016. I read that summer of 2016. I didn't read the sequels. I liked the ending well enough. It was fine. It was very scary. And I first started reading it at midnight on a subway, which was a choice. <laughs> there you are, Puta. So cute. So for someone who read a bit of sci-fi, what one book series would you re recommend? Now we have someone who's like mid-tier sci-fi in terms of like experience. Um, <laughs> I mean, it depends. I, I don't know series very well. So sci-fi series, I was talking to someone about this, like they exist and I haven't read as many series in sci-fi as I would like. Um, I mean, one of the new ones I've read is Escaping Exodus. It's a duology and I think it's really astounding. I love the Machineries of Empire, but someone needs to go into that kind of knowing it's meant to be confusing. <laughs> so both of, the, both of those are fun, but I don't know how many sci-fi series I've read. I'm like looking at my shelves. I Mostly series are more um, satisfying for me in fantasy. Like I read the first book in a lot of classic sci-fi series like Ender's Game and Dune and stuff. And I've never continued because everyone's always like, it's not as good and, or they go too long. But I need to read more series. I'm actually picking up infomocracy soon like by soon next year which is the start of a trilogy and i hope i like that one if you haven't read ubik by philip k dick i would recommend that oh my god ubik by philip k i dick. love that book so much i know it's we, basically a twilight zone episode as a book nothing makes sense it's so ethereal and like dreamlike in quality do you still like playing seven wonders in person i do i don't actually play online games as much like I got an iPad so I could while like football was happening, but then I just started reading during football. And then I started caring about football, which was terrifying. Like actually caring then about plays. The Browns got good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but we don't play Seven Wonders as much anymore because there are other um, types of games that do what Seven Wonders does that we are just liking. Or I force my parents to play really heavy games. Oh, it moved, it moved. Esme. I know you guys all got the movie early. Um, cool. No, I mean, that's what I'm hoping. Cause so I like Dune and I, I read Dune knowing that it was a influential book. So I read it with that lens 2015 and I want to actually maybe make a video. I know everyone's making a video about Dune, but I have Dune thoughts. So I'll just put them out there eventually, but I don't love everything about its pacing and it gets so like, overly philosophical but not in what i consider interesting ways <laughs> so i'm hoping the movie streamlines that i would like to see the worm <laughs> you would like to see the worm i'm just like werner herzog in the mandalorian <laughs> it takes that long to wake the cat <laughs> well with with the other cat yes but this this cat has not a care in the world as you can see he's fine now he's got his feet up he's kicking it <laughs> Thank you. Cat emoji. The fluffy mass. Yes. No, he's he's fluffy and fat. It's really, it's quite a lot. He's like John Cena. You can't see him. Much chunk. <laughs> Everyone just like took a moment to go all out on this cat. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, eagle versus shark. <laughs> oh, it's a talk. That seems good. This, this this should be on our list. Maybe next year. <laughs> you would be such a good pose for like one of those terrible Christmas cards with the ugly sweaters and like the face <sighs> protruding out in the background. We should. He has a Christmas outfit. He will actually wear outfits for me. So, hello. Yay. <laughs> As they should be. He has stopped trying to like balance himself. So like he is just putting all of his weight onto my arms. Evie, don't sign up for something you're unprepared for. Don't do it. <laughs> um, oh, gosh, where's Ariel's comment? There it is. The cat looks like the cat from that darn cat. <laughs> I don't know the reference, but I'll believe you. Hey, Ben, fellow Ninth Rain lover. We're both reading Ninth Rain at about the same time. And so is Travis, who's in the comments. And it's been really fun. We were nervous because some people didn't love it, which fair. I, I can see that. I've mentioned Dying Fox Gambit, but everyone's asking for beginners and like, I'm not saying you have to be well read, but you have to know what you're getting into. I don't know. It's confusing. Everyone who's read it has been just like, what did my brain just read? 
<laughs> so I don't know. It's it's one of those ones that like I love so much and I don't want to like recommend it. And then the person has the wrong expectations and they don't love it. Um, yelling cats are the worst. I agree. Yeah, that's what he is. We He gets his own bedroom at night because yeah. we don't want it. Yeah. And it inadvertently worked out that we got an apartment with a spare room that we were going to use for a desk, which we like still a have office, one. which we still use. But when we were first moving in, we just put the cats in there because we didn't want them being all about while we were moving in with and, all the furniture. And it just kind they just kind of accepted the fact that like, oh, this is our room. Yeah, and it is. That's where um, when I do other live streams, that's the room I'm normally in. This is where Ryan works, but it has windows here, so we look good and we're not scrunched. <laughs> So, oh God, where did the comments go? Here we go. I like the idea of reading Malazan, but I definitely couldn't focus on just that. Um, I mean, I think I'm doing okay for myself, but I think you very much have to know who you are as a reader. And I think making my spoiler vlogs has been really crucial to my enjoyment because I love checking in with myself and putting all the puzzle pieces together. And so I go from being overwhelmed to being like, oh, that's such a cool like thing. And then I get into the puzzly part of reading. But it's a lot of work. Um, it's the most work I put into a book. And I usually feel like the work is worth it by the end of the book. But they're dense. They're confusing. They are very indulgent. Like the author is doing stuff that I wouldn't consider actually good choices. Like if I were an editor, I'd be like, do we need to do this? And like, yes, it's world building. But it's like, I'm now at the point where everyone has like 5 million names for one character. And it's it's hard. Um. Bye. Enjoy your Victober event. That's when people read Victorian literature in October, Ryan. In case you didn't know. I think I'm the one person on this planet that didn't like the New Deal film. I mean, that's unfortunate for you, but I'm not surprised because chances are that means I'll like it. <laughs> Sometimes Evie and I's tastes diverge dramatically. And you love Dune, the book, so much more than me. And I know they're, I knew from the trailer they're going to mess around with Paul's character. And I think that's kind of almost blasphemous for some people. So I kind of knew that would happen. I kind of want to watch the David Lynch Dune from the 80s that like was just a horrible adaptation. Like just to have them side by side. Yeah. I want to see the director's cut of that original one. Because wasn't that original one going to be like six hours? I uh, Something like that, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. I don't think that they ever released that. Uh, yeah, fair. If I want, I mean, I've heard, yeah, there's a Tremors board game too. I've never watched the Tremors. That wasn't part of my sci-fi upbringing. Like I watched a lot of sci-fi channel because my dad was like an avid viewer of the sci-fi channel, but it mostly was like movies that were too scary for children that he made me watch. And like, um, like he showed me Alien when I was like 12. And then um, lots of Star Trek so much. I, I love Star Trek. I don't talk about it enough. And Doctor <laughs> Who. I love Doctor Who and Star Trek. It's great. My favorite heavy board game. Feast for Odin for me. I don't know what your favorite. I guess um, the ocean game, the one where you build cities. No, it's probably Terraforming Mars. Yeah, Ryan loves Terraforming Mars. You haven't gotten to play the new card game, which I like better. And I think you'll like it too, because your favorite part of Terraforming Mars is playing cards. Mm -hmm. And the card game is just cards. Um, weirdly, I feel Vita Nostra prepared me to reread Nine Fox Gambit. <laughs> yes! This makes me happy. I think you'll like Vita Nostra too when you're in the mood for that. I think it's going to scratch your like literary itch. It's a weird book. Um, have we played Wingspan? You have. I haven't. I don't think you have. Um, I haven't played Everdull. I have played, I think you mean Orleans. Um, I played Wingspan because um, my best friend works for Mass Audubon and like she loves birds and they love Stonemeyer games. And so they always get like early Stonemeyer games. So they got Wingspan within like a month of it coming out and we played it. I played the newest expansion, which I really like. It's fun. I like how quick it is for the engine building it is. I'm not always very good at it. I think Ryan would like it, but we just, I don't own a copy. My friend owns a copy. I don't need one. I haven't played Everdell. I think Orleans is good. It's a bag builder and it's actually quite quick. If you want a different theme, but similar game, Altaplano is in Peru and it's cute. It's got alpacas. Um, Kayla. Yeah, so they're comparing Vita Nostra to Nine Box Gambit in, in that comment. New comments. Oh, God. Um, I mean, I'm going into... So I think going into adaptations and just recognizing it's going to be like 
a different thing is so important. <laughs> Because for me, I used to be that person who was like, watch the first Harry Potter movie. It's like, they removed the Hufflepuff Quidditch match. How dare? <laughs> How dare they do that? <laughs> so I, I think but since I want changes, I think I'm optimistic. Bare minimum, it's going to be pretty. And I trust this director. And I, I also know because I've seen his stuff, it's probably going to be slower paced than people are prepared for with the trailer. Because his movies tend to be slower paced. If you've seen Arrival or Blade Runner 2049. Agreed. It's a fun game. I don't know what this yeast is for. Watch it, Ryan. Oh, the Dune. The <laughs> 80s Dune. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Looks like you're all alone, Evie. I'm so sorry for you. It it's always sucks when you don't love a thing that everyone else loves. Like, I don't know. It just you. It's not that you were doing it to be a curmudgeon, right? Like, it's just it didn't connect. Uh. <laughs> You know, maybe we should see if Cool Corner is going to show it. That's true. Because they might, because they do indie stuff all the time in like old films. So that would be a fun midnight showing that I'm kind of surprised, unless they just don't have it. You want to put him down? Yeah. Bye, everyone, everyone say bye, put, second. bye to Puto. He's, he's leaving. <laughs> he does, he's not as uncomfortable as he looks. <laughs> all right, put him down. He's done his penance. Oh, it's, it's her favorite tune. So... Also, sometimes I guess on pronouns and I shouldn't. So if I ever use your wrong pronouns, feel free to correct me. I will not be offended. Uh, Reba, uh, huh? Why did I wear black pants while picking up the cat? I don't know. Why do mistake. you wear black pants in our lives? That's the mistake. <laughs> Are you able to juggle reading two or more books at the same time? I do multiple. You do one. Yeah. Um, I can do it now. I mean, it's like watching I'm not the one with a book channel. Well, sometimes it's also nice, like, so, um, it's nice because it's like watching multiple TV shows. Like, it, you know, you just know I'm in this story now. I don't like reading multiple books of the same theme at the same time. Cause then I, sometimes it's fun as like a comparing things to each other sort of idea. But other times I'm just like, I, I like variety. So if I'm reading different books, I want them to be different lengths and different genres. Um, so that's important for me. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, but booktube did kind of push me into that, but also start reading dense things like Malazan. Um, I can only read like 50 pages of Malazan a day, but I want to keep reading that day. So I pick up another book. Uh, <laughs> we have peak eighties, funny horror, Kevin Bacon connection. <laughs> Everyone's telling us we should be watching Tremors, Ryan. Just so. Maybe for, for the next year of Halloween movies. That's true. Yeah, no, I really like the card game. I think it it's easier to set up. It's it's quicker, but you still get all the satisfying moments of building your engine. Like it it it's truly like not that like I think when you look at the game, you're like, this is something I've seen before, but like in the best way possible. Uh Tremors 2 was as good as the original is the unpopular opinion Evie's bringing to the table. What are you looking for? I don't know. Putel ran off, so he's probably going to start yelling in the hallway. That's fine. If you hear a cat yell, you know <laughs> who it is. Um, Evie, it's not that unpopular. Also, Derry, you don't know this, but Evie just started Assassin's Apprentice and is loving it. And I know you love Hob, so Evie's just been sending us all of her thoughts as it's happening. Um... Yeah. Um, you have a copy. You yeah, have a really I nice actually, copy. Yeah. Well, really nice. The Barnes and Noble. The Barnes and Noble special edition. Yeah. Oh, God, it's underneath so many other books. Yeah, you're the one who started the horizontal stacking. Like, Ryan shelves have vertical and horizontal stacked books, and that's it's what got me to do it. I had too many books to fit in one shelf, and so that's where I'm at. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I I, I read Dracula years ago, and um, I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I bought it the same time as Frankenstein, and I enjoyed Frankenstein more. So I haven't really, like... Are they actually comparable, though? Like, aren't they different genres? Is yeah, I mean, Dracula's considered one of the first, like, horror books. Frankenstein's considered one of the first sci-fi. But, like, Frankenstein still kind of gets clumped into the horror section, too. Okay. Um, Bye, Katie. But I just associate the two together because I bought them at the same time. I mean, fair. And they're also both classics. We have a lot of people saying bye to the cat. <laughs> that's so true <laughs> so true there was like not blissful but there was a period of my life when i was an undergrad and i could wear black yoga pants <laughs> and not have to lint roll every five minutes um i haven't seen that one yeah i don't even know what that is uh david lynch david lynch 
we were talking about did the dune movie oh movies. okay okay i've seen twin peaks i've seen <laughs> i've seen um blue velvet i think i've seen one other lynch movie and i like oh, he it. did twin peaks i'm supposed to watch the first couple seasons of that i haven't done that yet um oh god the comments are moving oh here it is um uh, Pretty, yeah, no, and it's actually, the binding's really nice. Like normally with these special editions, I don't like the binding, but this is actually pretty nice binding. Really solid pages. I don't feel like they're very fragile. Here, I'll, I'll show off all my fancy books <laughs> since we're- Since we're doing since this. Since we're here. Uh, <laughs> that, that's exciting. Well, you're just, I know you're gonna love the entire realm of the Elderlings now. It might take you like three years to read it all, but you're gonna love it. Uh, you, you, yeah, no, we're definitely at that point, especially since Ryan won't let me get another bookshelf. Yeah. Like, I mean, look at my we shelves. I'm doing the best I can. We don't have the space right now. We, we're just not trying hard enough. This is the, the Frankenstein. Oh, I like the end pages. Maybe I think those are pretty nice. Also, I, so short. I, I have read it. You've had this on the channel before, but that's this is Dune. This is the Dune special edition before all of the five million Dune special editions. Worms. <laughs> I have read from this copy. It has really nice end pages too. So, but I don't think you can buy this one anymore. I never see it around. And this I haven't read. I've read about Ooh. some of it. All of H.P. Lovecraft. Burn it down. Um, I do need to read a few stories from this. I'm waiting for Alan to tell me which ones he thinks I'd like. And like H.P. Lovecraft was uh, kind of a racist piece of crap, but yeah. all of his stuff's in the public domain, so. Yeah, I mean, he's not around anymore. I mean, I, I don't like who he was as a person, but at least he was kind of equal opportunist. Like, he didn't like anyone. He was very prejudiced against everyone. I like that people are using his stories to, like, tell yeah. stories with more diversity yeah i have one the ballad of black toms a lovecraftian written by um, a black author and then jemison did that with the city we became um yeah evie i loves... love i love frankenstein dude no evie has like it's one of her top three books d depending on the day oh who's i just just gonna take a crap during this live stream cool <laughs> dracool is better than dracula i don't know what that means i don't think I, I don't even know what oh is that um the other bram stoker you were talking about Potentially. I'm uncultured in this degree. There, there he goes. goes. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Frankenstein is weirdly the reason. Nice. I mean, I read Frankenstein in my last year of high school, and I would have liked it more if I had read it on my own. And if, like, I mean, okay, in the teacher's defense, she might have talked about the themes that I always hear about Frankenstein, and I was just a distracted senior in high school. But I don't feel like I got... I don't feel like she framed it in the interesting way of here is the first woman who wrote a sci-fi book. Like I was always a sci-fi reader. Why didn't they get framed that way? Instead, we just kept comparing it to Paradise Lost or something like that, which fair but <laughs> to do with, I don't know. It was so boring. How many books are too many books? Um, <sighs> depends on how many bookshelves you have. Yeah, I was about to say, it depends on how many books you want on the floor. <laughs> uh yay fancy books yeah ryan has much well i guess i have fancy books i don't but i only oh yeah you have so you have such fancy books i only have the fancy wow. starlight books I, I i don't know i that but yeah but that's like my favorite like universe uh the answer is more than your house can contain <laughs> oh goes and googles what voxer is it's a voice messaging app um so it's yeah it's just a walkie-talkie voice messaging app that a lot of us use for buddy reading because it's just easier to hide spoilers and have emotional voice reactions. Um, this is what happens when we wake up the cat. Yeah, no, that is the weakest. Um, I think for me, the strongest in that trilogy is the second book, but chances are you're going to love the third book based off what I know about you and what that third book does intentionally and thematically. I think you'll really like it. <laughs> I've seen the first two, I think. Is there a non-animated? Well, no, no, I think I've only seen the sequel at like a drive-in. You know, when like drive-ins have I've double features. I've seen the first one. Yeah, it's not bad. I want a live-action Kung Fu Panda. Oh, I think she's referring to Dune, so I think you can still get this version. Because I think this version's better than the one that, with the blue pages. That's just me, though, because I felt the blue one. Like this is like naked on the cover, and I don't like that it's a dust jacket for the other one. If you're gonna have a fancy book, I don't want a dust jacket. 
Maybe that's a hot take. <laughs> I know, I know, but I have to spend money. Money. It, we live in Boston. <laughs> yeah, Frankenstein's great. Mary Shelley's great. Yes, that, that's true. Science. Uh, bye, Ariel. Yeah, we're probably ending this around one or whenever people stop putting comments in. <laughs> Just because uh, we got to go see Dune. I have to film some stuff. Ryan has some errands he wants to run. Um, and we have to corral a cat, apparently, eventually. Yeah, <laughs> I normally go with like, I, that's kind of why I like BookTube too. It helps me be accountable and remember things that I used to say I wanted to read and figure out, do I still want to read it? <laughs> and keeping tr up with my series is really important because I, I never, I love finishing series. So like, I'm really excited that we're doing like a book a month of this because I'm really liking these. You can't get these in the US though. For anyone who hasn't known, you have to buy them from the UK. And there's no e-copy, which is the bane of my existence. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a prequel. Oh, interesting. Mm. All right, well, I'll look into that. Yeah, no, I, I love using Voxer. I think it's really fun. And it's been a great way of, like, fostering friendship with people online. Because I, I'm not good at texting. Like, I grew up when texting started in, like, mid-high school. So for me, it still feels like a very... um detached way of communicating versus voice. It's also why I don't have a blog. I'm really bad at writing. I just like to blurt out my thoughts and have no grammar considerations. Well, wasn't the channel going to start as a blog? Yeah, I played around with having a blog for a while and then like I couldn't write reviews. But put me in front of a camera and I can ramble for 10 minutes. Like I can do it. <laughs> hey, welcome back, Puto. Oh yeah, no, I want to. The Paper Menagerie is the next um, collection I want to read. Especially since I've been hearing really good things about the hidden girl since I posted my video earlier this week. So, yeah, unless you don't want to, but I, I have that book. Blah, it's over there. <laughs> it's that one right there. Yeah. What do you recommend fantasy wise? So many things. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. All well, of them. The fantasy is so broad. Miss Bourne's obviously a great like jumping point. If you yeah, I mean, like, do you want a recommendation water? you've heard in every other video, or do you want like a new one? Uh -huh. It depends. What type of what do you want from a fantasy? Do you want something that's you've thought about your whole life since watching like the Tolkien Lord of the Rings, or do you want something that's like a school setting, like Harry Potter? Do you want something completely new? What type of writing style do you do or not, not not like? And do you like heavy thematic content or light thematic content? What type of characters do you want to follow? There's so much do good. You just like the song Fantasy by Mariah Carey. <laughs> there, there are so many good jumping in points. Somebody make a book off that. I haven't, but I do have on hold right now the first book in the Foreigner series because I want to start reading that because I think you're the one who's been recommending it to me or maybe it might be a different subscriber, maybe Brett. But I keep seeing her name, and I want to read her stuff. So I have a hold for the first book. And I know that that long series is split into, like, trilogies because um, Rachel at Colinati talks about it. And I really love her channel, too, for Sci-Fi Rex. So I want to read that. Um, it's on my list. Yeah, like, it really helps foster friendships, I feel, boxing. It's, it's so nice, and it's at your own pace, so you don't have to worry about, like, time zones. It's like someone sends me a message at their 7 a.m., and I just, like listen to it whatever my 7 a.m is yes i just i think it's fun thanks for stopping by <laughs> welcome <laughs> thank you um uh, he will love literary fantasy oh but see that's the one i don't like as much but then i will say maybe vita nostra because <laughs> i think that's very literary i like literary um sci-fi more than fantasy Ooh, Baron the Nightingale then, maybe. Because that's more like beautifully lyrically written and it's more like historical fiction with folklore fantasy elements, maybe. Oh, I'm just looking at my shelves as if that'll give me literary fantasy. What I just said, I don't know. tell? Ooh, Folklorn. Folklorn. Folklorn's good. Um, by Angela. Oh, I can't read the rest of her name from over here. But Do you want to just go grab it? I guess so. It's a very pretty cover. It's like we're we're there. There's no. There's nothing keeping you in the seat. Shush you. Oh, I have two that are probably good for literary fantasy, and they're both I think perfectly fine for any reader at any level. Oh, I read these recently, so if you've been around, not that exciting. But folklore. This is I would think more of a contemporary with magical realism elements. Very thematically good. 
The Inheritance of Arcadia Divina is also more magical realism, literary fantasy. This is definitely more literary, I feel, than this. But they both work. Are you just like hiding behind? I don't my know books? where you're flailing your arms. Flailing. My... <laughs> so yeah. I have no stage direction. I cannot. <laughs> science documentary. My friend TV. loves science documentaries, but I do not, and I don't think she's in the chat. So, if I yeah, ask me again in the Discord, and I'll go find out. But I, I leave work at work. <laughs> um. How can I get what miss what message the book is trying to get across? I don't know. You, you, I mean, if you aren't noticing it yourself, you can look at reviews and other people's opinions and see if you agree. So yeah, those are my uh, my. But I, again, I'm not probably then your person for literary fantasy. Like that's just not my cup of tea for some reason. I like my fantasy to be more like not adventures because I don't like adventure fantasy, but like. I don't know, an escape and really cool world building. Like one of the reasons I'm loving Ninth Rain right now is the really cool world building. So, okay, cool. I was right then it was Brett, <laughs> but it, I'm getting it on hold. I really want to start that. Um, it's good when your friends know what you like. I'm very good at knowing what Evie won't like. We all have <laughs> our <laughs> specialties. Oh yeah, Guy Gabriel K would be good. I read Tagana by him and I think that'd be good. And it's a standalone. So if you're also like, don't want to read series and so were these, these were both standalones as well. Yeah, I'd agree with Piranesi. Maybe the Starless Sea. The Starless Sea is so, like, not fantasy fantasy. Well, it is fantasy, but they don't shelve it in the fantasy section of the bookstore. The, the Cloud Book? No, the Starless Sea. But yeah. the Cloud Book's also fantasy. Cloud Atlas, I think. Or is it sci-fi? Oh, I don't know. But no, the Starless Sea you haven't read. It's by Aaron Morgenstern, and it annoys me. It doesn't, I don't hate it, but it annoys me. Can she read our comments? Everyone can read. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading your comments. We out here. We're here. Ha. <laughs> I haven't taken a book to the face yet, but it's 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 a matter of time. It's an uh, occupational hazard. Yeah, no, I think that one works. It's more like, yeah, I think literary fantasy and historical fantasy. So, and that's the thing. Normally, those types have less magic in them, and I love having all the magic. <laughs> so, it's probably the problem for me yeah so i think that one's really lyrical i also i mean evie doesn't like it but a lot of people who tend to like writing in their books have liked the name name of the wind which i have read but it's been eight seven years since i've read that book <laughs> uh i've read I, i've read his first trilogy too um i i liked it well enough uh especially someone who doesn't really like arthurian retellings or the arthur myth and that was in there so that was something you I, so this is yeah of course you would like the starless sea evie this is where our friendship is <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're approaching the hour and should probably wrap up um any last questions yeah last call <laughs> last call oh god <laughs> oh, I heard about it. Um, uh, ben was telling me that you have a spoilery review on um, Goodreads because I hadn't seen a negative review. And yeah, you didn't like that one from what he said. Uh, here's a recommendation from someone. I mean, fair, but he, you know, works for millions of people. <laughs> Maybe billions. I actually don't know how many people have bought his books. I have not. We've only I have. Oh, you have. Okay. I, I liked it a lot. <laughs> I would rewatch it. Okay, but I kind of want to watch Full of Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. If ours is our next anime, but we need to finish Attack on Titan, which will have its last season. Yeah, is that out yet? It's happening soon because winter's almost here. I think it's yeah. happening in the winter. The trailer was dropped, but I didn't watch it. Bye, guys. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I mean, that was a thing that also happened while I was reading a couple years ago is like I wanted to find a Venezuelan author or any Latinx author and I couldn't so then I made a more active effort to read by people of color just for my own wants what are your favorite foods Oof. tough chocolate I guess is what I have to say dinner wise but if you've watched me eat chocolate over other foods if I was too lazy to eat dinner have you not at least they were on a waffle I ate a brownie for lunch yeah, but you ate other things. <laughs> I put chocolate chips in my yogurt. Yeah. I'm just saying, for me, it's probably chocolate. <laughs> okay. For me, it's probably, like, 
buffalo chicken anything. That's true. You will always get the buffalo chicken option. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I understand that we need to have the labels and they're kind of useful, but sometimes they're not as useful as they could be because then people give connotations to labels that it's then- a double-edged sword. Yeah, it's hard. It's really hard. Um, especially happens when you do like age categories and stuff like that. Um, I've seen Firefly. Me Ryan's too. seen So yeah, we've watched Firefly. Yeah, Firefly is great. Yeah. I didn't like Serenity that much. I don't, I haven't watched it. But like, it, that was like an impossible ask to like, basically put a movie's like seven seasons worth of like plot development into a movie. Yeah, I think for me, I was told that Serenity would give me more questions than answers and wouldn't satisfy what I wanted from the story. So I just head canon after the I last mean, it, episode. It's, it's fine. Yeah, well, I don't need to watch a fine movie. I could read a book. No. Um, go to beverage. You all, you all have your empty coffee cup. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I usually just drink coffee and water. Yeah. I, uh, I'm a big water person, but my drink of like my vice is like the seven ounce cans of Pepsi, specifically the seven ounce cans because they're the right amount. Um, and ices cause I'm going to get an icy tonight at Dune. It's going to be great. <laughs> Watch their machine be broken. Bye Marlene. Will do. Hopefully. Nice. Cool. I'm glad I'm ending this before that live for you. Cool. This is the timing has worked out well then. <laughs> <laughs> um I I found science cool for my own musings. I don't know. I like how asking questions like how the world works, but I was the kid in third grade who's like, why are leaves green? And then I learned about chloroform it's on my own. So I think it just depends on what questions you want answers to. Have fun at lunch. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> I would do it with a book I didn't like. Like, I mean, like honestly, a Wuthering Heights special edition. This book's already read, so like, <laughs> and it'd be thematically and appropriate. And it's red. Like, it would just make it better. Yeah. All right. So we're going to officially end the broadcast, everyone. Thank you so much. This was a fun hour. See, I told you. People would talk to us. <laughs> Send us all the questions. Thanks, Ryan, for being here so I wouldn't have to run solo. So that was my fear. <laughs> and yeah, our friendship is not ended, Evie. Calm down. <laughs> that was an eventful live stream. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to end the broadcast. <laughs> Bye, guys.